The Hearts of Gold podcast is brought to you by the Grow and Share Network, produced by Off the Walter Media Productions. Welcome to Hearts of Gold. Today we have Sydney with us. Hi, Sydney. Hi, Cheryl. Can you tell us about your Girl Scout Gold Award project? I brought middle school and high school girls together to talk about topics like self body image, self love, uh, the differences between healthy and toxic relationships, and healthy communication. I created a mentoring program called Project Good, which stands for Girls Overcome Obstacles Daily. And I thought it'd be a great way for girls to just connect, um, especially during the pandemic when I created it. I always wanted a space where I could connect with people outside of my school and inside of my school who wanted to talk about these topics, but I never had that kind of space. What girls did you work with and how did you identify the group that you chose? So I worked with middle school and high school girls. I chose girls who thought they'd um, benefit from the program and wanted to do it with me. Uh, I kind of just sent out an email um, from girls in my school. And I also DM'd people on Instagram and made a poll um, to see who'd be interested in being a part of the program. Did you have any challenges collaborating with your school in order to get the program off the ground? One of the biggest challenges was reaching out to people. So what I did, I made some flyers. I used social media. My uh, mentor at the time was the dean of the students at my school. So she helped me to get in touch with uh, different heads of schools, um, so that they could send, share the flyers with other students at the school. And that really helped um, to get more girls interested and know about the program. What types of self-care and coping skills did you teach to these girls? I talked about how it was really important to communicate your feelings with people that you were talking about. Um, I talked about how it's important to write down all the things that bring you joy so that you can go back to that later. I talked about gratitude practices and how it's important to just know what you have so you feel more content with those things. I um, first started the program because uh, I wasn't doing so great with my mental health at the beginning um, of the of 2020, so February, and I took a Girl Scout um, workshop, and I was the only girl who attended, which is really interesting because they had the same program the night before, and all the girls attended that one, but it was called the Who I Am workshop, and I learned so much about how um, my opinion is who I am basically. And um, I shouldn't care so much about how other people think of me. When the pandemic happened, it was really just like isolation. So I wasn't really um, connecting with people as much as I used to. And I had to really think about what I was doing, how uh, my body looked or anything like that. And I knew that other girls were probably feeling those same things too. Um, so after the workshop and we, um, one of the things that we did during the workshop was we, uh, got a piece of paper and we wrote all of the af positive affirmations about ourselves on it. And I still have it on my door today. And it really just reminds me all the things I love about myself. And I really wanted other girls to be a part of the program and understand how they could love themselves too. So one of the um, projects we did during the program was um, we all had our own like Google slide presentation and um, we put all the things that we liked, things who made us who we are, um, how we wanted to be known because a lot of times you think that you're known for the things that people know you for, but it's really important how you want to be known so that you can make the right image for yourself instead of always um, relying on how other people view you. What kind of feedback did you get from the girls that attended your presentation? It's nice to know that other people are going through the same things as you. It's really nice to have a space where you can share all your feelings because I know for me, I felt like there was no um, place outside of school that I could just be myself, but to have a space where other girls are going through the same things as you and they actually care about how you're doing and want to see you do better um, the week after um, you meet. It's just really nice um, to know that you have a place to connect that's outside of your school. What was your biggest challenge during your project and how did you overcome it? Getting in contact with other schools and things like that and just by talking to my mentor and seeing how um, she, her experience and um, connecting with other people could help me. Do you have a special memory from your project to share? One guest speaker, her name was Diana Gru, and she was a fitness guru and also a teacher. And she taught us about like her experience and things that she learned growing up and how at the, like, 
in the larger scheme of things, the people who you're in the hallways with or call you mean names or say things about you, uh, they're not gonna be with you for the rest of your life. Um, so just to put things in perspective and not um, think about those things too much because later on they'll change. How did you find your speakers and your other team members? And how did those other team members impact your project? I found most of my speakers through my sister and my uh, just, I guess, adults in my school community. Um, another speaker um, that we had was actually um, the wife of the diversity, equity, and inclusion person at my school. Uh, so that was really helpful. And uh, the um, fitness guru I just mentioned that she worked with my sister previously. Um, so that's how I found her. And then uh, with my team members, it was really just girls in my school community who were interested in helping other girls. What did you learn about the Gold Award process that you didn't know before that might be helpful to somebody else? It's not as intimidating as you think it is. Um, I think when I was first starting out, I was kind of nervous because people won't, well, at least the leaders in my, in my troop made it seem very scary to start. Um, but after joining a Zoom where they were talking about the Gold Award, it became more attainable. And then I just think something to remember is just to always take pictures um, and to as you're going or as you're doing your project, just to take notes because um, it makes it so much easier uh, to like create your final project. And the gold, the, I think it's called the Go Gold um, website where you like put everything in. It's really easy to use. So that's good too. And it's a good place to put those notes too. Definitely. You are also a poet laureate. Can you tell us about that? I guess it kind of goes in with my Gold Award project. When I started um, thinking about wanting to do this project and connecting with other girls, I um, just learned more about myself and my self-esteem kind of went up as well. So once I felt more confident about myself and my skills, I decided to apply to a, a bunch of different like competitions and contests and literary magazines. And then in August, I found out that I um, was a finalist um, to be the Youth Poet Laureate of Philadelphia. And then I did an interview um, with uh, the past Poet Laureate and the current um, Poet Laureate at the time, uh, Yolanda Wisher and Trapita Mason. And then in late August, I found out that I became the Youth Poet Laureate of Philadelphia. And the application process was basically talking about community service, submitting um, different poems that I had written, and thinking about a project that I'd want to embark on in my uh, time as Youth Poet Laureate. Being Youth Poet Laureate may, basically means being the youth ambassador of poetry in the city of Philadelphia. So I got to go into different schools and talk about uh, poetry, how I um, became a poet when I started, first started writing poetry. Um, and it was, I think the best part about it was that I got to kind of tell kids my story and inspire them to write poetry as well. Because for me, uh, I had different people telling me different things like, oh, you write poetry all the time or, oh, like just saying easy things that will ruffle my feathers, I guess, and make me really um, upset that I write poetry all the time. But it's those things that you really like doing um, that are worth pursuing. And I think um, it doesn't really matter what other people are thinking or saying about you or thinking about you, um, because at the end of the day, you're the one who gets to do all the fun things um, that you want to do with your passion. What has being a representative of Philadelphia been like? What experiences have you had? One of the best experiences for me was performing at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. It was really fun because uh, after um, a long period of time of doing lots of events on Zoom, I was able to perform in front of a lot of different people and I would be on stage uh, with, with the mayor and um, in the audience were council members too. So it was really exciting. And then I really just enjoyed writing that poem because it was um, a poem I wrote specifically for um, the reimagining of the museum. and. I got to um, take a private tour of the museum and see different artworks that were going to be um, kind of featured in my poem. And I really just enjoyed writing that poem because I, I, when I get into like the state of flow and I'm writing outside and all of the um, rhymes and things start coming together, it just feels really nice. Do you have any tips for anybody that might want to become a poet or a writer in our audience? 
just write, write as much as you can. A lot of people told me that it's really important to read other works. I think that really helps um, if you want to be inspired by other um, authors and poets. And then just really write down your thoughts. Don't worry so much about making it perfect. Don't worry so much about making it um, rhyme. Um, you can always do that in the revision process, but it's really important just to get your thoughts down on the paper. And even if you don't share it with anyone, it's nice to know that you're able to process your own emotions and feelings. You are also a published author. Can you tell us about your book? So this is my book, Daydreaming. Uh, it's split into four different categories, um, coexisting with the world, uplifting my blackness, thinking about you and thoughts floating in my head. And my sister did the illustrations for the book. Um, I had been compiling a lot of these poems since uh, seventh grade. And then I published it in June of 2020. And my sister has helped me as well. And it really goes through just my journey through middle school and high school, um, how it was being a black girl in a predominantly white institution, different social justice issues that really made me think about the world differently. And I kind of wanted to um, urge people to think about what the part they play in the world and how if you're not doing anything about something, you're actually adding to the, the destruction. Um, so it's really important to take action and to let people know how you feel about certain things. And we'll have a link in the show notes to the book. What inspires you to compile and publish a book? I love writing poetry and I really wanted to share that with other people. I know that a lot of people, um, when I share my poetry, um, some people are moved by it and I wanted to be able to share that with more people and kind of just inspire young girls to follow their dreams and to do what makes them happy. Since fifth grade, I've identified as a poet and I think you don't have to wait for someone to call you a poet to be a poet. You just have to um, name it and write poetry and then you're a poet. Uh, so I always wanted to, like publish a book and just having the opportunity to do that during the pandemic and um, to partner with my sister to make it as well is just really great. What challenges did you face trying to publish a book? Finding different avenues to selling it and being able to market it. I'm still um, learning new ways to market myself and uh, my book. And it's really about trial and error and just trying different things. Uh, more specifically, I think when I was starting um, to compile all the poems together, just like picking which ones were the strongest and which ones um, maybe I shouldn't include in the book. The main thing with that is usually just hearing what my family has to say and how they think uh, my poems sound because they're a really big part of um, how I know when the poem's done or when I think it's ready to share. Do you have other Girl Scout experiences that you'd like to share? More recently, my uh, Girl Scout troop and I went laser tagging and that was really fun. And we played like five rounds and I won one of them, which was really fun. Uh, and it's just, it's really, an, I love my Girl Scout troop and I've been a Girl Scout since sixth grade. And it's always great to just connect with them and we meet every Thursday. Uh, so getting to know each other for so many years and um, grow so close is just incredible. And then I think more um, privately um, for me is just selling Girl Scout cookies. Um, I sold 2,050 um, boxes this year, and I was really happy about that. I, my goal, my original goal was to sell 3,000, but I knew that if I aimed high, I'd do pretty well. Um, so I really just marketed myself on social media. I sent a lot of emails out. Um, I did a lot of booths too, and it was all to help me um, fund for my trip to Northern Italy this summer. I said destination trip. Yeah. So it's my Girl Scout destination trip to Northern Italy. I haven't been to Northern Italy, but I've been to Italy and oh my goodness, I would go back every year if I could. What else is in your future? At Northwestern University, I'll be studying uh, communications and I'm really excited to, I think, just branch out and try a new thing and go to a different place and learn something new and meet new people. Is there anything I haven't asked you that you'd like to share with the audience? If you're thinking about earning the gold award, you should just go for it. And 
if you uh, need help or any direction, you can literally email me um, at sidtalks at gmail.com or you can DM me on Instagram. I'm really happy to help because I think it's just an incredible community of girls that you build after you earned your gold award. And also the process of earning your gold really makes you learn so much about yourself and how you can make an impact. I really learned that no matter what I do or how or anything I set my mind to, I can accomplish. Uh, so I really recommend that many girls uh, go and earn their gold award. How do you make your s'mores? Making sure that the marshmallow is like on fire and that it's burnt so that the insides are really gooey. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Make sure to click follow or subscribe so you always know when new episodes are released. And don't forget to power your passion and conquer your challenges. The Hearts of Gold podcast is brought to you by the Grow and Share Network, produced by Off the Walter Media Productions. Thank you for listening and spreading the word on what we do. If you want to share your story of how you earned your goal award, reach out and send an email to growandshare at outlook.com. Be sure to listen to the newest episodes on your favorite podcast app, as well as view the full video episodes on youtube.com slash Cheryl M. Robinson. That's youtube.com slash Cheryl, the letter M, Robinson. Take care, and we'll see you next time.